the mistress of King Edward VII, Daisy Greville, the bold socialite. Daisy Greville was an active participant in the Marlborough House set of Prince Albert Edward, and despite its seemingly conservative facade, the club was anything but prim. It served as a notorious hub for extramarital affairs, with Daisy often at its epicentre. While cards were also part of the entertainment, the primary focus was on indulging in unrestrained adultery. Join us as we delve into the scandalous tale of Daisy Greville, one of history's most audacious socialites. Frances Evelyn Maynard, later known as Daisy Greville, was born on the 10th of December 1861 in London's Berkeley Square. Her father, Colonel Charles Maynard, and mother Blanche Fitzroy, who hailed from a royal lineage, marked an unconventional pair due to their significant age gap. At Daisy's birth, her father was 50 years old, while her mother was merely 18, setting the stage for a life coloured by intrigue and scandal. As the elder of two daughters, Daisy and her sibling, nicknamed Blanche after her mother, were fortunate in terms of their financial future. Their father stood as the heir apparent to Henry Maynard, third Viscount Maynard ensuring a substantial inheritance. However, fate took an unexpected turn with Daisy's father, failing to outlive the Viscount. Despite the tragedy, Daisy found herself the sole beneficiary, inheriting the prestigious Eton Lodge in Little Eton, Essex. With her father's passing at the tender age of four, Daisy's mother wasted no time in remarrying. Blanche Fitzroy's union with Lord Rosalind, a prominent figure in royal circles, swiftly followed, resulting in five half-siblings for Daisy. Despite the loss of her father, Daisy's newfound wealth and familial ties eased her transition into a new chapter of life. With her mother's remarriage and her own maturation, Daisy soon found herself thrust into the world of courtship. Despite being considered a highly desirable match, Daisy encountered a setback when introduced to Queen Victoria's youngest son, Prince Leopold. His haemophilia posed a significant obstacle in their union, dampening the prospects of a future together. Daisy harboured reservations about marrying Prince Leopold, perhaps due to his delicate health. Fortunately, an ideal suitor was closer than she imagined. Francis Greville, Leopold's aide and son of an earl, stood readily available. Though it took some persuasion, Daisy eventually secured her parents' approval, and in 1881, she and Greville reunited in matrimony. On the 30th of April 1881, Daisy exchanged vows with Francis Greville in a grand ceremony held at Westminster Abbey. The event was attended by esteemed members of the royal family, including the Prince and Princess of Wales, who bestowed their blessing upon the newlyweds. Little did Daisy know then, the Prince's presence would soon exert a significant, albeit at times, tumultuous influence on her life. Following the extravagant wedding festivities, Daisy and Francis Greville plunged into high society, hosting lavish parties that garnered considerable attention. However, amidst the glamour, lurked a darker reality, as both spouses engaged in extramarital affairs, succumbing to the temptations of youth and recklessness, setting the stage for turmoil ahead. Amidst Daisy's whirlwind of social engagements, a cycling frenzy swept across Britain, known as cyclomania. Daisy, an early enthusiast, embraced the trend wholeheartedly, yet her passion for cycling would soon entangle her in controversy and scandal. As Daisy and Prince Albert Edward, also known as Edward VII, shared a mutual love for cycling and the fact that he had attended Daisy's wedding, rumours began to circulate, insinuating a more intimate relationship between them. Fueled by gossip, the press spun tales of romantic entanglements, prompting a musician to compose a suggestive song about Daisy, further solidifying her status as a topic of fervent discussion. Henry Dacre capitalised on the cycling craze with the song Daisy Bell, a playful take on Daisy Greville's exploits, though the identity of the song's narrator remains ambiguous. Speculation swelled, with many suggesting it alluded to Prince Albert Edward. Such conjecture, 
only served to amplify Daisy's prominence as one of England's most intriguing figures. In 1893, Daisy's father-in-law passed away, signalling a pivotal moment for her and her husband. With his demise came the inheritance of an earldom, propelling them to esteemed Warwick Castle. Here, amidst the opulent surroundings, Daisy found herself at the zenith of society, surrounded by a new circle of affluent revellers, yet little did she know, peril lurked beneath the surface. Recognising Daisy's prowess as a hostess, she was swiftly embraced by the creme de la creme of society, the marble house set, led by none other than Prince Albert Edward, the very figure implicated in the infamous bicycle scandal. This elite enclave bestowed upon Daisy a, a coverted position. However, with acceptance came unspoken expectations. As a prominent member of the Marlborough House set, Daisy and her female counterparts were subject to a startling decree. They were expected to entertain extramarital liaisons at the behest of the male members. This rule, coupled with a strict prohibition of divorce, ensured the preservation of the set's clandestine affairs. Under the watchful eye of Prince Albert Edward, divorce was viewed as a cardinal sin, capable of inciting scandal and tarnishing the royal family's image. Consequently, any member who dared to seek separation faced expulsion for eternity, a fate deemed far worse than marital discontent. Immersed in the intrigue of the Marlborough House set, Daisy herself succumbed to the allure of forbidden romance, engaging in an illicit affair with Lord Charles Beresford. Despite her mutual transgressions, Daisy's outrage reached fever pitch upon learning of Beresford's wife's pregnancy, a glaring hypocrisy that prompted her to pen a damning letter. Intended solely for Lord Beresford's eyes, Daisy's letter condemning his actions inadvertently fell into the hands of his unsuspecting wife. The revelation of her husband's infidelity plunged Lady Charles into turmoil, shattering her world and exposing Daisy's role in her anguish. Faced with the repercussions of her impulsive act, Daisy turned to Prince Albert Edward, beseeching his aid in retrieving the incriminating letter. Moved by her distress and mindful of her favour, the prince reluctantly agreed to intervene, setting in motion a desperate bid to salvage Daisy's reputation and quell the scandal. Join me in part two to delve into the captivating tale of compromise, passion and scandal. And this all unfolds in the corridor of power amidst the glittering lights of high society. As the Prince of Wales negotiates with Daisy Greville, a spirited woman unyielding to social dictates, tensions arise, friendships fracture and love triangles unravel, revealing the intricate web of relationships that define their world. From clandestine affairs and secret rendezvous to scandalous revelations and public confrontations, Daisy's journey through love and intrigue offers a riveting glimpse into the complexities of Edwardian society and the indomitable spirit of a woman determined to defy convention.